I am Liz, and through a curious twist of fate, I find myself bound to the most remarkable man I've ever encountered. Alex, we're both 28, proud owners of our cozy abode, diligently covering our bills while crafting a life uniquely. A year has passed since we exchanged vows, and truth be told, life has been quite pleasant, except for a singular complication, Alex's parents. Now, don't get me wrong. I never anticipated playing the role of the knight in shining armor as the daughter-in-law. However, I certainly didn't envision becoming the family's unwelcome guest either. The inaugural encounter with my in-laws felt akin to entering a lion's den with a stake strapped to my neck. Jane, my mother-in-law, possessed a knack for scrutinizing me as though pondering whether I was more of an inconvenience or just plain dull. It was evident that she had formed her opinion about me before I could even utter a greeting. Alex had forewarned me about his mom's assertive personality on our way to their place that first time, advising me not to take it too personally. Despite my efforts at dinner while innocently passing the salt, Jane seized the opportunity to reminisce about Stephanie's culinary prowess, referring to me in the third person. Alex, seemingly uncomfortable, acknowledged her remarks without meeting my gaze. Feeling like an invisible presence at the table, I swallowed my discomfort with a forced smile. When I tentatively acknowledged Stephanie's cooking skills, Jane's smile didn't quite reach her eyes. She seemed to be measuring me against a ghost, and I confided in Alex about feeling scrutinized. He reassured me, holding me close and affirming that I was the one he chose. Little did I know that Jane had a more intricate plan in motion, and I was unwittingly cast as the pawn in her familial chess game. Living with a severe allergy is more than just inconvenient. It's akin to having a persistent shadow whispering danger in your ear. Since childhood, peanuts have been my formidable adversaries, leading to an emergency room visit after a mere spoonful of peanut paste. Consequently, my parents received a crystal clear directive. Shield her from peanuts and an array of other foods for her well-being. Soy, peas, cherries, almonds, tomatoes, apricots, bananas, and even potatoes. It's a list that raises eyebrows among waiters and prompts hesitation from friends inviting me over for dinner. Jane, my mother-in-law, is well aware of this extensive list. Nevertheless, she manages to question the restrictions every time we dine at her place. Her tone, hovering between concern and disbelief, persistently suggests that maybe I can indulge just a bit, oblivious to the potential consequences. Once at a family gathering, Jane insisted on the safety of her casserole, only for Alex to discover a potentially hazardous ingredient. Though we gracefully excused ourselves, leaving the untouched casserole behind, the incident lingered as a small victory in an ongoing battle where Jane held all the cards. I've learned to navigate this allergen-laden world with caution, treating every meal outing as a strategic operation. Alex, with his supportive demeanor, accompanies me through this culinary minefield, constantly reassuring me that my cautiousness is justified. Yet, Jane's subtle jabs persist, extending beyond the dinner table. Her texts carry a warning tone, reminding me that not everyone takes my conditions seriously. It's more than a mere jab. It's a reminder of vulnerability, a realization that my allergy is perceived as a weakness to be exploited. Dinners at Jane's house are orchestrated affairs, resembling a play where everyone knows their lines except for the unwitting lead. I, the daughter-in-law, I was the unpredictable element, the wild card capable of unintentionally stirring up a commotion with a single bite. Alex did his best to ease the situation, but there's only so much you can do when you're playing on someone else's home turf. On a particular evening, the tension hung in the air as heavily as the gravy on the table. Jane was bustling around, placing dish after dish on the table. I sat there with my plate empty, anxiously waiting to discern what I could eat without risking a hospital visit. Alex, in his ever-supportive manner, passed the green beans, urging, they're just divine. Jane's voice dripped with sweetness that failed to reach her eyes. Eyeing the beans, I sensed something was off. What's in them? I asked. Oh, just a touch of almond slivers for crunch, Jane replied, waving a dismissive hand. Halting Alex's reach, I said, I can't eat those. Almonds are a no-go for me, Jane. Feigning surprise, a hand to her chest, she responded, Oh dear, I must have forgotten. Silly me. Alex stood up, his chair scraping back. 
his voice firm with frustration. Mom, this is serious. Liz could end up in the hospital. Jane's eyes narrowed slightly and she retorted, I just wanted to make something nice. It's not my fault Liz has all these allergies. The room fell into an uncomfortable silence, forks pausing midair, and embarrassed glances exchanged. Mark Alex's dad attempted to diffuse the tension. Let's just enjoy the meal, shall we? There's plenty Liz can eat, but the damage was done. The rest of the dinner passed in strained politeness, with Jane asking pointed questions about my allergies, as if she were jotting down notes for the next time. Later, when Alex and I were alone, he apologized. I'm sorry, Liz. I should have double-checked everything before we came. Tired of feeling like a problem to be managed, I responded, It's not your fault, but I'm starting to think your mom does these things on purpose. He didn't answer, and he didn't need to. We both knew the truth. Jane was serving up a side of malice with every meal, and I was the main course. I could always tell when Jane had been working on Alex. He'd get this distant look in his eyes, as if he were seeing through me, weighing her words against his own judgment. On this particular evening, a cloud seemed to settle over him, and I knew it before he even spoke. My mom thinks we should consider. Well, she thinks we might not be thinking about the future enough, Alex muttered, not meeting my eye as he fumbled with the TV remote. The future, I asked, a sinking feeling in my gut. Yeah, you know, kids and your health issues, he continued the word issues hanging awkwardly in the air between us. She talked to you about my allergies again, didn't she? He sighed, setting the remote down. She's just worried, Liz. She thinks it's a lot for us to handle, especially if we want a family. I bristled, asserting, We've talked about this. I've managed so far, haven't I? And there are plenty of people with allergies who have kids. Alex ran a hand through his hair, a sign of stress. I know, I know. It's just she has this way of making me doubt things. The room was quiet for a moment, the tension palpable. I reached for his hand, our fingers intertwining. We're not fighting. We're on the same side, remember? He nodded, pulling me into a hug. You and me against the world, right? Right, I said. But as I held him, I couldn't shake the feeling that Jane's words were like weeds threatening to grow wild and choke the life out of the beautiful thing we had. It wasn't just my allergies that needed managing. It was the doubts that could seep into the cracks of even the strongest relationships. The news of my pregnancy was a happy surprise for Alex and me, but a complicated one for everyone else. When we announced it to his parents, Jane's reaction was like watching a robot trying to mimic human emotions a pause, then a smile that didn't quite match the situation. We're gonna have a baby, Mom, Alex said, his voice a mix of pride and caution. That's wonderful, Jane managed to say, the words sounding foreign in her mouth. We must have a family dinner to celebrate. The celebrations at Jane's were never just celebrations. But I saw the hopeful look in Alex as the night of the dinner arrived, and the house buzzed with relatives. Jane was the perfect hostess, moving gracefully from guest to guest. When she reached us, her smile was practiced. Congratulations, Liz. This is such a joyous occasion. Thank you, Jane, I replied, trying to match her formality. We're excited. Alex wrapped his arm around my waist, a silent thank you for playing along. As dinner approached, I felt the familiar anxiety. A table full of food was a minefield for me, but tonight I hoped would be different. As the table was a feast, and I felt every eye on me as I hesitated, my hand hovering over the options. Go on, dear Jane, urged, eat up. You're eating for two now? I smiled weakly, choosing the safest options, vegetables and rice, plain and simple. But as I reached for a slice of bread, Jane stopped me. Actually, maybe not that one, she said quickly. I'm not sure if the baker used soy flour. I paused, bread in hand, meeting her gaze. There was a flicker of something there concern, or perhaps it was a challenge. Thank you for letting me know, I said, placing the bread down. However, warning bells were already ringing in my head. How did she know about the soy flour? It felt like too close a call, too perfect a save. The rest of the meal passed in a blur, with congratulations mingling with the clinking of glasses. Yet, I couldn't shake the feeling that Jane's hospitality was a veneer, concealing a trap set and waiting for just the right moment. The family dinner, meant to celebrate our future baby, was nothing short of a banquet. Jane had outdone herself, creating a spread that would make a Thanksgiving dinner look modest. However, 
My stomach was tied in knots, not from hunger. Every dish felt like a potential hazard, a hidden enemy that could send me to the hospital. As we all took our seats, lively chatter filled the air, comprising the usual family gossip and stories. Jane, at the head of the table, presided over the feast like a queen in her court. She called everyone to attention with a gentle tap of her glass. Before we begin, I just want to say how thrilled we are to be celebrating Liz and Alex's upcoming addition to our family, Jane announced, her voice steady and clear. Applause and cheers followed, and I forced a smile, feeling Alex squeeze my hand under the table. Thank you, everyone, I said. We're really looking forward to this new chapter in our lives. The meal began, and I tentatively picked at my food, choosing the simplest items. Alex watched me, his brow furrowed with concern. You doing okay? He asked quietly. Yeah, just being careful, I replied. Pushing a roasted potato around my plate, Jane's eyes were on me and I felt like a specimen under a microscope. Liz, you haven't touched your salad. The dressing is on the side, just as you like it, she said, her voice tinged with forced cheerfulness. Thank you, Jane. I'm just not much of an appetite tonight, I said, avoiding the salad that could easily contain hidden allergens. As the dinner wore on, tension grew. Every time Jane offered me something, my anxiety spiked, and the room felt hot, the walls closing in. Then came the cake, a beautiful confection with layers of sponge and cream that drew admiration from the room. Jane cut a slice and handed it to me with a smile that might have been genuine if I hadn't known better. For the mom-to-be, she said. I really shouldn't, I said, looking at the cake, then at Alex, then at Jane. But it looks delicious. Oh, come on, Liz. One little bite won't hurt, for the baby Jane pressed, her voice as sweet as the icing. That's when Alex's dad, Mark, stepped in, swiftly knocking the plate from my hands. The cake tumbled to the floor, and stunned silence fell over the room. What the hell, Dad? Alex exclaimed, anger and confusion in his voice. Mark stood, his face pale but his voice firm. I saw the label in the trash. That cake has peanut oil in it to a room erupted in chaos. Jane's face showed shock, but her eyes betrayed something darker. Fear, maybe guilt. Alex stood, his chair clattering behind him. Mom, did you know about this? Jane's mouth opened and closed, but no words came out. In that moment, the truth became as clear as the danger on my plate. The room was dead silent after Mark's revelation, the dropped cake like a crime scene on the hardwood floor. Everyone's eyes were locked on Jane, who seemed to shrink under the collective gaze. Mom, is it true? Did you know? Alex's voice cut through the tension, sharp and demanding. Jane looked away, her jaw clenched, and for the first time I saw a hint of fear in her eyes. Maybe she realized that her actions hadn't just endangered me, but jeopardized her relationship with her son, her reputation, everything. The rest of the evening was a blur of arguments, tears, and hushed conversations as the family tried to process what had happened. Alex and I left early, the weight of the evening heavy on our shoulders. We didn't speak much on the drive home. What was there to say? The truth was out, and with it, the facade of a polite, if not happy, family was shattered. The drive home was quiet, filled with a heavy silence, loaded with things left unsaid. When we finally walked through our front door, Alex and I just stood there, the echo of the night's drama still ringing in our ears. Alex was the first to break the silence. I can't believe my own mother would do something like that, he said, his voice hollow. I sat down on the couch, the cushion failing to comfort me. I know it's a lot to take in, he said, sitting beside me and taking my hands in his. I'm so sorry, Liz, this is unforgivable. I looked at him, seeing the pain in his eyes, and my heart ached. It's not your fault, Alex. We couldn't have known she'd go this far. But the truth was there, hanging between us. Jane had crossed a line, and there was no going back. The family was in pieces. Some stood by us, shocked and appalled by Jane's actions, while others struggled to wrap their heads around the reality of the situation. The next few days were a whirlwind. Alex's phone buzzed constantly with messages and calls from relatives expressing shock, support, and apologies. Through it all, there was deafening silence from Jane, no apologies, no explanations. Alex finally broke the news to me a week later. My dad's left her. 
He can't get past what she did, he said, a twinge of something like regret in his tone. He said it's been a long time coming. I wasn't sure how to feel relief, sadness, pity. And Jane? I asked tentatively. She's not handling it well. She's alone now, Alex replied, a twinge of regret in his tone. We sat in our living room, the walls we'd painted together, the furniture we'd picked out during countless trips to the store. It was our home, filled with our memories, our love. Outside, there was a storm brewing, one that threatened to uproot everything we knew. In that moment, I realized that no matter what happened, we had each other. We were a team about to bring a new life into the world, and that was what mattered. I love you, Liz, Alex said, pulling me close. I love you too, I whispered back. The fallout from that night would linger, and the scars it left on our family would take time to heal. But as I looked at Alex, at the life we'd built and the future we were about to embark on, I knew that we'd weather any storm together. As for Jane, she was a chapter in our lives that we had closed, a story that we wouldn't let define us. From now on, it was just us, our baby, and the road ahead. Whatever it brought, we'd face it together.